friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, welcome to a Code Katas episode 46, um, the 46th episode. If you're new to the show, you can visit github.com slash coding garden slash code dash katas. And if you're new to Code Wars, you can visit codewars.com to see what they're all about. Um, unfortunately, the drop game is broken again today. Um, it was fixed for like the first part of the stream, <laughs> but now there are double drops. So we're going to disable it. Um, I'll give you like a I'll say hello to everyone and you can get your drops in while, while I say hello to everyone. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, uh, be sure to tune in over on Twitch because I will not be reading YouTube chats today. So head over to Twitch. Let's say hello. Hello, Portal Gaming. And thanks for the follow. Uh, this is Obai. And Lakshman, hello, good morning, and thanks for the follow, GC Power, hello, Gamer Boy, and David, and Win Thirty Two Zero Day, and Coding Pasta, and Doc, what's up, Doc, and Fabian, and uh, Gazija, who says, "Is it still double drop?" It is. <laughs> I think there's an issue with my chat clients. Like, if two of them connect at the same time, it starts listening for messages twice, something like that. I don't know. And good morning, Jan. <laughs> it's not broken. It's working twice as well. Yes. Yes, and hello, uh, Praxis, and Shines Love, and Kevin. Good morning, Portal Gaming. Good morning, David. Hello, Bob, and Terrazoid. Um, and Depopom says, I got the notification. That's good to hear. Uh, people sometimes don't get the notifications, so that's glad to hear that you did. Um, and today and this morning, uh, we are going to solve some easier katas. So <laughs> last time, we defeated the Tiny 3 Pass compiler with uh, much, much help from uh, Doc. Um, yeah, and, and also, if you definitely want notifications, join the Discord, because there's, I mean, there's a, a small chance that you won't get those, but there's a much greater chance that you'll get those versus other ones. All right, we're going to disable the drop game right now. Today is all about coding. Um, and if you'd like to su submit a kata for me to solve, you can click on issues and uh, suggest one. I am going to try and do the easier ones here, so like the 6Q. Let's try to do this one first, um, and then we'll maybe try to do one of the... F is there a 5Q? Yeah, there's like a 5Q suggestion, so we'll do that one next. Um, but if you're new to the Code Wars website, uh, you can go over to Kata. Um, and let's take a quick quick break. Uh, yes, it, yeah, so Doc is saying, does TMI generate a unique ID for each message? Um, I don't know if TMI does, but my backend does. And you'll notice that like this chat chat UI doesn't show duplicate messages. So I coded this differently than the other one. So yes, I could definitely look for an ID and not duplicate things. So, <laughs> Oh, I got the notification from YouTube and came to Twitch. I see. Field chaining HTML is interesting. Yeah, which what queue is that? Um, It's a five. Yeah, so we might have ch a chance to do that. We, may, we may, only, may only have time for about two katas this morning. So we're going to do that one. But uh, again, if you are new to Code Wars, go to their website, and they have many different coding problems that are user submitted, and they range in difficulty. So 8Q is typically the easiest, and 1Q is typically the hardest. Today and this morning, we're going to start at about a 6Q. It's kind of intermediate. Um, and some quick tips on the Code Wars website. Uh, I like to sort by most completed, because these are user submitted problems. And so sometimes it can be hard to figure out what they're even asking you to do. So if you sort by most completed, you're more likely to find something that you actually can complete. Um, they also have tons and tons of different languages. I'm going to be using JavaScript. And um, you can also choose like katas that I have not trained on, which is typically what I do, because I try to find brand new ones and solve those. But we're going to do 6Q, and we're going to do ones that were already suggested. So this one came from uh, Mate Viscal, and it is strongest uh, number in strongest even number in an interval. Cool. <laughs> Oh, thank you, uh, Gazija. Yeah, if you do exclamation mark uh, Discord, you'll get a link to the Discord. Oh, nice portal. And thanks for the follow, uh, Ultimate Rhyme. What are my thoughts on Salesforce? Um, a lot of big companies and smaller and medium-sized companies use it. So if you're if you want some kind of job security, it's a good it's a good field to get into because a lot of people are looking for Salesforce developers. I'll say that. Uh, and thanks for the follow, Brando. Hello, random people of the internet. <laughs> In for bot and music. Cool. Welcome, bot, to the chat. Um, let's get started. So we're going to do this one. And it says, the strongness of an even number is the number of times we can successfully divide by two until we reach an odd number starting with an even number n. So for example, if n is equal to 12, then 12 divided by 2 equals 6. 
6 divided by 2 equals 3. So we have to do um, a successive number of divisions by 2. And when we reach an odd number, um, we give back the number of times we had to divide to reach an odd number. So if uh, for the case of 16, we do 16 divided by 2. That gives us 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then 2 divided by 2 is 1, and finally 1 is an odd number compared to everything else. So the um, strongness here is 4. So given a closed interval, return the even number that is the strongest in the interval. Ah, I see. So that's a little bit trickier because it's not just given a number, find the strongest. It's you have an interval and you need to find the strongness of every single number. Uh, if multiple solutions exist, return the smallest, strongest, even number. Note that programs must return within the allotted server time. A naive solution will probably time out. So this this problem, even though this sounds like an easier problem, that's why it's rated as a 6Q, because we have to think about complexity and big O when we're solving this thing to make sure that we solve it within the, the I think you, you get a maximum of like 12 seconds or something like that. Okay, let's get into it. I'm going to click train. Typically, what I like to do is bring the uh, the code down locally, and we'll code it there. Ooh, Doc says uh, x and then a bit shifting divides by 2 pretty quickly. OK, remind me that, and I'll write it down when we get into the code. Um, code bin, code wars API, this. Team Red, <laughs> are we joining teams in here? What, what, is it, what does your bot do in for math music? Um, is, it, is it a good bot? Is it fun? We don't, we don't want spam in the channel. Um, OK, so I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it that. We're going to bring in the function math problems. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we have a few tests that we can bring in. So I'm going to throw those there. And what I like to do is change these to just console logs. <laughs> And we can start up Quaka, Q-U-O-K-K-A. -K -K Spell it with me, everyone, Q-U-O-K-K-A. -K -K and if somebody asks in the chat, how are you getting those logs to log in your editor? Just tell them, Quaka, Q-U-O-K-K-A, because <laughs> they're going to ask. Um, so we have our function. It takes in two values. And right now, we are returning 0. So we can see right now that the output of our function is 0, and we see the expected output out on the right. Um, so we got we to gotta code some things. <sighs> We want the strongest even number within the interval. So basically, we need to calculate the, well, not the strongest, not, um, not strongest, yeah, strongest even number. We need to calculate the strongness of every number between n, m, and m. That's the plan. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll send the link really quick, Moshiko. Uh, quaka, quaka JS. And I'm just using the free version. It works well if you're just if for like a code scratch pad. Uh, if you want to use it for like bigger projects that like require modules and stuff like that, um, you have to um, um, pay for it. <laughs> I don't know why that took me so long to say. Uh, um, let's catch up real quick. And thanks for the follow, uh, Dolan and uh, Ishmael. Should I make my bot follow? It's up, it's up to you, InfraMath Music, but let me know. What does your bot even do? Um, did, I, did the Baked Beans Challenge donation get fulfilled? No, it did not. If you, if you check out Twitter, um, you can see that I actually just donated all of the money that was donated to me. Um, there's this tweet here. Um, but no, <laughs> we made it to $173, which was way away from our goal of um, $1,337 on purpose because I didn't want to eat. Um, baked beans on stream. So you can check out that tweet to see what happened with all the money. Uh, Sujan says, I have two templates for users and an admin page. How to route them in one React app? Or should I make two separate apps? Take a look at the last React Q&A that I did. That will answer all of your questions. <laughs> um, so I showed the like a login page and a dashboard page, but the exact same logic could be applied to a uh, a login page, a log, a, a, a like a landing page, a logged in user, a member dashboard, and an admin dashboard. You you could do all the same things. So check out that like two streams ago. All right, and this is Doc's comment. We're going to we're going to leave it here, and if we need it, we'll we'll try to use it. But we're going to try to do it the more obvious way first. But we'll see. And thanks for the follow, Sujan. And hello, Ilana. It's been a while. Wait, have I seen you here before? I don't know. Maybe it was a different Ilana. <laughs>
<laughs> Math problems. Oh, it's like a pole bot. Okay. Um, I'm here doing chemistry and physics. Nice, Depo Pom. Just hanging out. Uh, Paul says, so for Node.js, sudo apt install node, then sudo apt install npm, then create a folder, put sir. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you're on Linux, use uh, NVM. It's called a node version manager. It's going to make your life a heck of a lot easier rather than download or installing it from the, the repositories. Is GitHub down right now? I just tried to search GitHub. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Um, let's see, is this the one? Yeah, this is the one. So, read this, read, read the whole readme. It's gonna tell you what you need. And there's an install section. Follow that and you're, you're, you'll be good to go. That's all you need for uh, Node.js. And thanks for the follow, Tim. Yeah, no, no need to ask your question twice. twice. We're, uh, we're going through everything for the most part. <laughs> Uh, what do you prefer? Choices. Chocolate and chips, or both. And thanks for the follow, uh, Arnav. Um, yes. Respect the mods. The mods make decisions, and I respect the mods' decisions. <laughs> You're welcome, Silver. <laughs> oh, it's you on Twitch? It's nice, nice. Welcome, Alana. <clears throat> uh, but don't, don't spam messages. That's my, that might have been why you got timed out. GitHub status. GitHub was down yesterday. Who got a 500 error on, on GitHub yesterday? Because I did, right when I was trying to, to uh, launch a product. Um, luckily, like, it cleared itself up. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so Win32 saw it yesterday. Hello, random people on the internet. <laughs> read the readme. <laughs> yes. And, and I said that in a very nice way. Not like RTFM. It's like that readme is going to tell you exactly what you need and, and how to use that tool. So, yeah. Use an NPM package called in. Um, I've heard of in for node version management. I, I like NVM. Uh, it works on Linux and Mac. For Windows, there's a special version. That version won't work. Why did my exclamation car comment show up? I have no idea. <laughs> Could you put a space before it? Apps to help navigating on Mac. Uh, if you check out uh, coding.garden, uh, slash videos. I did a video called uh, setting up a Mac for web development. Uh, and I go through every single tool that I use. So you see this, this thing popping up to switch between windows. This is an app called hyper switch. Um, I can do keyboard shortcuts to put my windows in different places. That's a, that's an app called spectacle. Um, I use this thing called Alfred for launching. Um, this up here, I don't know if I installed iStat menus in this video, but do, go there, coding.garden, click on this button, watch that video. And actually, I just got a new MacBook. I'm not using the new MacBook yet. So I think I'm going to do a live stream very similar to that, where we set up a, a MacBook from uh, from scratch all over again. <laughs> RTFM. Um, yeah, the only, th the only thing, I, I actually don't like this acronym, RTFM, because it's, it's very hostile to newbies. Um, whereas it can be, like, I mean, the sentiment is there, like, there exists documentation that if you read it, for the most part, you should be able to get something done. But this this is like very, uh, like it, it closes off the conversation immediately because I'm still open to answering questions if you have them, but make sure you read the directions first. <laughs> and good morning, John, who learned what the blockchain is. Nice. And hello, Philippe, I'm doing good. Yeah, I don't know, Andrew. It could be, oh, I know why, because it's a period. So uh, my my exclamation mark detection is looking for a word. So it needs to be a letter. That's why. That was fun to think about. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, GitHub's being used by crazy, like crazy. Too many new home gamers. Hello, Being Pranjal. Welcome. Imagine needing an app to quick switch on Windows. Hey. <laughs> I know that, like, the thing is, you don't need it, but uh, this hyper switch uh, shows window previews, and that's not built into the Mac, but I see what you're saying. It does have alt tab, but not with window previews. Yeah, we're going to do another setup video. <laughs> I got the, the the exact same MacBook that I have right now, um, a MacBook Pro 2015, but it has um, a larger hard drive, and it has a dedicated graphics card like an AMD Radeon or something like that. Yeah, nice. Feel free to tune in. 
<laughs> and thanks for the follow, uh, Batahan. Okay. Strongest even number. Uh, let's write this out. So we maybe we'll write a function that we can just pass a number into it. It will give us back the e the strongness of that number, and we need to call that function on every single value um, in uh, in this range in to m. So let's go there first. Um, <laughs> that does, it does show up. It does, yeah. So it has to be a word, at least like one letter. <laughs> and good morning, Mfi. Welcome. So Doc has an idea. Search odd multiples of powers of two from large to small that fit in the range. So multiples of two thirty one, then two thirty, then. Okay, we'll we'll hold on to this idea. I think I th I think I really do just want to try the naive approach first, where we we calculate it for every single value, but we're gonna find out pretty quick that um, it takes a pretty pretty long while to run. So, okay, we need let's it, just looking at the problem description. We can write a simple function that that determines the um, the strongness of a number. So, let's create a function called like get strongness. It takes in some value. And um, we need to store the strongness. And that starts off as 0. And then we divide by 2. And actually, um, I guess we can determine, um, we'll, when we call this function, um, I, we, can, we can do a check right here. Actually, it could slow us down. But what I want to say is, if value mod 2 does not equal to zero, meaning it's not divisible by two, we just immediately return zero. So there's no need to check um, because it's already it's odd already. <laughs> so uh, strongness equals zero. And then uh, we need to iterate. So we'll say uh, while value mod two does not equal zero, say value divided equals two. Uh, and actually, this this removes the need for this check. Here we go. <laughs> Watch. And then we'll say a strongness plus plus. So every time we divide by two, we increment the strongness. On the next iteration, we're going to check to see. Um, um, well, actually, I, I messed up. I need to, I need to see while while it is divisible by two, not while it's not divisible by two. <clears throat> Taking a quick stretch. Um, that. And then we will return the strongness, like so. So if we calculate, like in their example, the strongness of 12, we should get back 2. Let's just see really quick. So if we log um, get strongness, what did I call it? Yeah, I called it get strongness of uh, 12. We should get back 2. And we do. Very good. <laughs> and uh, the other example was 16. We should get back 4. And we do. Very good. So our get strongness function works. Uh, and if we pass in an odd number, it should just return 0. And it does. Very good. So easy enough. That function's done. Now, we need to call that function for every value, every even value in this range. And that's where we could run into a very long runtime. But we'll get back to that. Uh, let me catch up on any follows. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Kyle Smith. Um, Oh, wow, 16 inches of the current MacBook not working. Um, no, uh, my current this is I'm using a MacBook right now. It works, but it's 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 getting old, <laughs> and the battery cycles are getting up there. So this has seven 782 battery cycles, and when it reaches a thousand, technically it's at end of life. Um, and this this MacBook is like five years old, roughly four or five years old. So. I found a used one that had a battery cycle count of only like 150. So it's like, it's almost like a brand new computer, almost. <laughs> and um, thank you, the one and only, for the follow. When can you write an if like with that without the curly braces? Yeah, so in, in JavaScript and, and a lot of other C style languages, so, so languages that have curly braces like this, typically if an if statement only has one statement, like after the condition, uh, you don't need the curly braces. Same thing with the else statement. If the else statement only has, excuse me, one statement, you don't need the curly braces. Also a while loop and a for loop. If, if a while loop only has one uh, statement, 
you don't need the curly braces. In this case, I have two statements, so we do need the curly braces. And hello, Debersic. Uh, I hope you have a great day as well. <laughs> uh, I'm in Denver, Colorado. That's where I live now. Hey, welcome, the one and only. Uh, I legit watch all your YouTube vids. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. By the way, value uh, shift one <laughs> would be a big speed up, but I think V8 is smart enough to change divide by two into that itself. That might be a good point. We'll see. Um, to do. Use docs speed up. <laughs> uh, I just thought of like doc and um, back to the future. Like the flux capacitor. We're trying to make it faster. <laughs> trying to get to 80. <laughs> uh, and hello, Pog. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, be careful. So uh, it's actually uh, some style, some, some coding style guides uh, don't want you to not put the curly braces on if statements or while statements or for, or for loops. The reason being is it can sometimes be confusing. And um, if you ever want to change your code from one statement to two statements, you might forget that you don't have the curly braces and then you have a bug. Because if you have an if statement with no curly braces and one statement below it and then another statement below that, technically the second statement is not inside of the if. So I would be very careful with that. Um, for the most part, you want to use curly braces just to make sure that you don't introduce accidental bugs. Oh, thank you, Silver. <laughs> Spider Monkey is a superior JavaScript engine. And thanks for the follow, Captain Ashtar. Hello, one line of me. Welcome. Where we're going, we don't need curly braces. No, I mean, this is not a shortest code challenge, so yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Spider Monkey is used by Firefox, GNOME, and MongoDB. Interesting. Whereas Chromium is only used by Node and, uh, well, V8 is only used by Chromium and Node. However, look at the market share, though. I mean, I don't know. You'd have to look this up, but I'm sure Chromium and Node have a very large market share compared to the others. I don't know. Watching me code is almost like an inter internship. Nice. I'm glad, I'm glad you can learn some stuff. And hello, Eric Coder. Uh, when will I work on the front end? Well, we have to seed the database first. And we'll probably plan out the API first. So it's going to be a while. <laughs> um, but I will try to work on the home inventory app this weekend. And, 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 um, if you look at my YouTube channel, we are so close to 42,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're at, oh, we're, we're only 300 away. So I have a feeling that either Saturday or Sunday we're going to reach 42,000. And there will be a special stream incoming. Basically, I'm going to go live, and then I'm just going to stop streaming when I don't want to be live anymore. So we're going to have a big, long string stream where we'll hang out, we'll code a bunch of stuff uh, when we reach 42,000 YouTube subscribers. And for anybody watching on YouTube, I will actually be checking YouTube chats when we do that live stream. Um, you might see that I'm not looking at YouTube chats right now. Um, let's see. Scott, I'm going to answer questions just because I don't want to neglect all the YouTube people. <laughs> Let me catch up over here. It's your curly braces, Marty. Something has to be done about your curly braces. What's up, Adsit Spark? <laughs> or you could use a ternary for one statement. Yes. Um, but again, we're getting into like unreadable code territory. I would say use if statements with curly braces, no matter what, even if it's only one statement. Yeah, so when will that 24 hour, I mean, potentially 24 hour stream. I would say like at least eight hours, but we're just going to go until we can't go anymore. Um, Chakra is the only modern closed source JavaScript engine. Interesting. But they open sourced it. And thanks for the follow, Numkid. <laughs> uh, just don't do it in late hours. I'll try to go uh, live in the morning, and it, it'll be live uh, for any time that's good for different people around the world. I'll say that. 42K! Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Light Bam. Okay, let's see what the YouTuber people have to say. Um, and again, I'm streaming on Twitch, so head over there if you want me to read your chat more often. <laughs> and uh, good morning, uh, uh, Yahon. And uh, Mifale, Quaka is not free. Why? Because it's a very nice tool that developers put a lot of time into. <laughs> and so they should be paid for their time. Um, that's why it costs money. And um, they, they do have a free version. But, again, that goes with anything. That's why a lot of things aren't free, because people have to actually build, build those things. And hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> uh, Mac development. You only need Vim and Tmux. Nah, we're using VS Code. And welcome, Perez. 
Um, I don't restore with iCloud in your new MacBook. No, I don't use iCloud at all. <laughs> I have local backups here in my house. Um, and honestly, honestly, I could lose everything on this hard drive and it really wouldn't matter. There might be some code that I haven't pushed to good GitHub, but yeah. <laughs> Can I do a stream of adding a C++ module using the in API, node to using the in API? Uh, that would be fun. I've, I've seen it before where you can use C and C++ inside, or you can link it to Node.js projects. Where do you check the battery cycle count? Um, you can go here, go to System Preferences. Uh, let me hide my screen for a second because I'll show you. But I don't want to show my... I mean, I feel like I've shown it before, but I don't want to show my serial number. Oh, no, not System Preferences. Click the Apple, click About This Mac, um, and then go to System Report, and then click on Power and then you will see your battery cycle count. Here it is. Um, enhance. <laughs> Health information, I have 782 cycles. Um, if, you, if you look at the, um, the guide from Apple, you can see that um, they say that your, your battery is technically at the end of the life when it reaches 1,000 cycles. It'll still work, it just doesn't hold a charge as long, so yeah. My thoughts on learning Vim. I think as a beginner programmer, you, you have better better ways to spend your time than learning Vim, honestly. But if you do want to learn Vim, check out Vim Adventures. It's really nice. Well, happy birthday, Jaundi. Um, yeah, happy birthday. We'll sing happy birthday. That's, I think that's the last acknowledgement we'll do of uh, YouTube chats. We're going to sing happy birthday, then we're going to keep writing some code. Click me for fun. <laughs> Uh, system, delete system 32. I am not on a Windows machine. Um, my favorite streamer list. Yes. Oh, thank you, Emphy. You're our mod, so I think you have to say that, right? <laughs> Boa. Never heard of it. Open Quaka. When? I don't know. I think, I mean, it might be open source. If it's installed in Visual Studio Code, you can probably look at the source. Long live live streams where you be coding a bunch. <laughs> And hello, Eric from uh, Germany. And thanks for the follow, uh, Almir. Cool. Read the following manual. <laughs> thanks for the follow, uh, Beaumorte. Win3200 Day says, I had to turn into my MacBook Pro for a keyboard replacement. Came out with a new battery keyboard and trackpad for free. That's what happened with this one. So this particular model of MacBooks had a recall on the battery. Um, and I actually had a different issue with the MacBook. Well, no, it was, it was the fact that it would no longer work without being plugged into power, but um, it turns out that it was that battery issue that they were recalling all those MacBooks for. So when they replaced my battery, they actually replaced my entire motherboard, which has the hard drive soldered to it. So yeah, that happened. <laughs> all right, let's sing happy birthday. <clears throat> we're going to, we're going to tune our ukulele. Um, ukulele tuner. It might be in tune. A little high. Good enough for me. <laughs> and thanks for the follow, zombie. Sadness. Hey, Coder and Black. Can we send some some <laughs> some heart emotes in the chat for Coder and Black? Should not be sad. Be happy. We're writing code today. Heart emotes in the chat. <clears throat> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to John D. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, John D. Ooh, I hope you moved over to Twitch. <laughs> you might still be watching on YouTube. Uh, when can you say that you're an average or good at programming? Good at a programming language. If you can solve problems, yeah, I don't know. The thing is, you should always have the mentality that there's more to learn. Like I have, there's so much that I don't know about, like the internals of JavaScript. Um, I'm pretty good at the language itself, but really understanding like what things might get optimized or one thing, what things are better to do or not better to do at like the lower level, that's stuff that I don't know a lot about. Um, so I would say 
flip your mentality. Just always be improving. <laughs> oh, thank you, the wanderer. <laughs> oh, nice. Welcome. Welcome to Twitch. Is the chat duplicate MV? <laughs> you check. Uh, it's it's uh it's not fixed. No, that's why the drop game is not on. <laughs> but you made me think for a second. Though these these two messages are one second off, so those are not duplicate. Oh, pro yeah, proxies are sweet. Uh, I recommended it before, but if you look at my um the video that I did on vanilla MVC uh coding garden vanilla MVC. Um, I basically show how to build a very simple front-end framework um, using just vanilla JavaScript, and we use proxies as our um, our way of listening for changes on data. So if data changes, we automatically update the view, and we use proxies for that. Proxies are cool. How to build a WinForm as C-sharp with JavaScript. Um, it wouldn't be WinForms, <laughs> but you can use something like Electron for building desktop desktop apps, or uh, something like Proton Native or Vuido for building desktop apps. But it's not necessarily WinForms. There might be some sort of bridge. You skip my questions from YouTube. <laughs> What's up, get some? What did you say? Uh, to deploy a production level app similar to Inventory app with Node Express and Postgres, what kind of service and host do I need? If it's production level. It gets a little more complex than just putting it on a server because typically you want a load balancer. You would want to use some sort of uh, database management service like AWS RDS because they do automatic snapshots. Um, they can do auto scaling of your database. It, it gets, it's a little more complicated than a like one minute answer. I'll say that. But eventually, once we get there, I will show how to deploy that home inventory app. And thanks for the follow. Turn into beautiful. Proxies are, are sneaky, especially with, with proxy, yeah. So if you've never seen the with keyword in JavaScript, it's pretty interesting. With. Um, here it is. Use of the with statement is not recommended as it may be the source of confusing bugs. Uh, and also, um, if you use the with, with keyword, the JavaScript engine can't optimize your code. But let's see what you can do. Um, so you can say with and then pass in an object. And basically, all of the properties of that object become available in scope as variables. Uh, it's super weird. You shouldn't use it, <laughs> but it is a thing. Uh, this is my break timer. I'm going to acknowledge follows. We've been streaming for only for 36 minutes, but I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, and thanks for the follow, uh, Jay Yotishmoy. How did I learn to play guitar? I taught myself with uh, tabs and YouTube videos. And, and that's, that's a ukulele, which is different from a guitar, but the same concepts apply. And thanks for the follow, Chris BM. And thanks for the follow, Infrabot. When mentioning JavaScript GUI frameworks, we shouldn't forget GDK, which is most likely JavaScript focused now. GDK? Isn't that like native stuff? <laughs> and thanks for the follow, Quality Coder. And hello, MV. Welcome, welcome. Oh, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> An open source widget toolkit. Create user interfaces that users just love. Is this Java? No. JavaScript? What? What? <laughs> you can use JavaScript? I had no idea. But yeah, look at this. I guess this is just like Node. Pull something in, start up an application. That's cool. OK, where were we? We were trying to solve this kata. Let's get let's get back into it. We'll we'll we'll, we'll read these questions. Um, yeah, back at it again. And hello, uh, G doctors, welcome. Uh, Philippe has a question. I'm learning C sharp at college and developing a few projects, but since I started following you, I'm beginning to like JavaScript. So should I learn two languages at the same time, or should I focus on one? Um, I would say, because you're not a complete and total beginner, because you are doing it in university, probably doesn't hurt. Um, doesn't hurt. If you're completely and totally new to programming altogether, it can make things confusing. But I would say if you've been coding for a little while, it's probably OK to do. The, the only downfall of trying to do multiple things at once is you can mix things up. You may forget things. You may forget about best practices in, in one thing over the other. But yeah. And thanks for the follow, uh, Rotten. Oh, you wrote a GNOME top bar extension. That's cool. Is it bad to use with? 
uh, it is bad to use with, yes. <laughs> uh, mainly because the, the JavaScript engine can't optimize what variables are available in scope, so your code is a lot slower. Um, it could result in like weird buggy code because like even JavaScript linters wouldn't know that certain variables exist, but yeah. And hello, turn into this beautiful. Brython, Python in the DOM, nice. <laughs> it's like Node GUI, but instead of but instead of Qt, it uses GUI Toolkit, which no one wants to use. A chat app in React Native, maybe one day. Sheafman, <laughs> I was learning Java and JavaScript, and then realized they aren't alike, and they ended up only sticking with JavaScript for now. Yes, they are two very different things. All right, I said I was going to take a break. We'll take a we'll take a quick break. Actually, let's do this. We're going to code the naive solution, and then we'll take a quick break. Um, so. <laughs> Okay, um, chief man, Java is to JavaScript as hand is to hamster. Yes, the only thing they have in common is the name. Um, okay, so we have a we have a range, and we need to get the um, the even number that is strongest in the in the interval. Okay, so I think that's the lowest strongness. So between the interval of 5 and 10, we return 8 because um, 8 has a strongness of 3. No, 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 the largest strongness. It is the largest strongness. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so we just need a loop that goes from um, in all the way up to um, m. So while, um, no, 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 let i equal n. <laughs> so i starts off at n, while i is less than or equal to m. I'm going to go all the way up to m, uh, i plus plus. And then um, we can create a variable that's going to store the largest strongness. So let's, let's say like biggest is 0. Um, actually, we'll, we'll, hold, we'll hold on to. We want to know what is the value and what is the strongest because we have to return the value. So we need to hold on to both. So I'm just going to put these both in an object. Strongness is 0 and value is 0. Um, and not even biggest, largest. <laughs> and now let's, that is an object, we'll use const. OK, so um, if uh, get strongness of, oh, we'll store it in a variable. strongness equals that um, value equals um, I we're gonna call instead of I we're gonna call it value so value equals in while well, value is less than M value plus plus well now go back <laughs> value plus plus we're gonna get the strongness of that value and if the strongness uh, is greater than the largest dot strongness, then we are going to say largest dot value equals value and largest dot strongness equals strongness. Cool. So it's fa it's fairly simple. We iter iterate over the entire um, range, and then at the end of it all, we should have the strongest number. So we want to return largest dot value. Let's see. Does it work? We get 2, 8, 48, 192. Great. So the naive solution works, but I have a feeling we're going to have to optimize this. And we will try to. Uh, MV says, I get an error while parsing JSON data from an API. Uh, unexpected character at line 1, column 1, parentheses. Does the error come from my end or the API? It might be that your API is using uh, JSON P or JSON with padding. And in that case, you can't directly use JSON parse. Um, but yeah, I would um, try to just look at the response you get back from the API, like either in the network tab or like in Postman or something like that, and make sure that the response actually starts with curly braces. If it doesn't, if it starts with like a name or like some some function name in parentheses, then it's JSON with padding, and JSON can't parse that without some prior work. So yeah. And thanks for the follow, Jerry Scoopy or Scopy, <laughs> Jerry Scopy. <laughs> The fact that Java includes a JavaScript interpreter doesn't make the confusion any less confusing. <laughs> and thanks for the follow, uh, Zistam. Object, object. 
yeah, Postman is a great tool. I agree. Uh, <laughs> this ended up just being the image itself. Um, I think you have your markdown backwards. It's brackets parentheses. It should work if you do brackets parentheses. Is there any way to see my local host in the same PC with my public IP address? Not without passing in the port or without doing some port forwarding. And if you do port forwarding, your ISP would have to open up port 80 or port 443, which they usually don't. Um, so there's that. I would say don't do not do that. <laughs> there are tools like uh, Ingrok, which will let you uh, basically create a public URL that points to your local machine. Um, though if you're already on your local machine, you, you wouldn't really wouldn't need to use your public IP address. You would just use your local IP address. But uh, check out Ingrok. That could help you out. What's up, Uber? I'm doing good. <laughs> and thanks for the follow, Master of Pasta. Master of Pasta. Flying Squirrel. <laughs> there we go. And hello, Ibaldi. Welcome, welcome. I'm so torn. I want to stream, but you and InstaLuff are both live. I want to watch you guys. Yeah, just watch us. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's up to you. Um, I will be done streaming in about 20 or 30 minutes. We're only probably only going to get one, one problem done this morning. But we'll see. Your ISP just opens all ports. We just need to open them in our router config. Oh, our ISP. Yeah. The thing is, like, at least in the US, a lot of ISPs don't open port 80 or 443 because they don't want people running public web servers just at their house for whatever reason. And thanks for the follow, uh, Denny. Instead of searching all numbers, search from big powers of two to small powers of two. Okay. This is our, this is, will be our first optimization that we try to do. Um, and we'll leave a note, but we're going to take a quick break. Need to upgrade my gear info? It's it's mostly up to date. The only thing that's not right on my gear info is that I don't use um, that Razer laptop for streaming anymore. Everything else is right, um, except for this. I actually use a, a, a desktop computer to stream, but everything else is the same. All right, so we have that note. Viewers, uh, it's getting more each week. <laughs> Wait, what? What's that? I don't know what that number's from. Send the kata URL. Yes, absolutely. You can give this a try. What's happening? Come. Weird. And thanks for the follow, uh, LeBron's James. <laughs> oh, Twitch total views. I see. Thank you very much. Um, let's take a break. <laughs> Keep saying we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to do a three minute break. And in the meantime, I'm going to, maybe I'll just keep standing here, but I'm going to turn off my microphone so that I don't actually talk. And we're going <laughs> to say thank you to all of the wonderful YouTube members and patrons that support the stream. Their names will appear on screen. No, they won't. I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta fix this. <laughs> Wait, no, they should. They should actually. Let's see. I'm going to black out for a second again. There we go. <laughs> so in a second, you're going to see all of the uh, patron and YouTube member uh, names come up on screen. And I appreciate you all. Uh, we are going to start a normal break. Here we go. So this pops up too. And I'm going to mute my microphone. I'll see you in two minutes. Okay, that was like, oh, it was 58 seconds. I can see. <laughs> that was a minute. That's good enough. Because <laughs> I'm going to have to go soon anyways. 
Uh, the person that donated a hundred, yeah, definitely. They, I think they actually are already a uh, YouTube member. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, the other day we got that huge donation. Uh, eat both eat baked beans in that time. Nah. <laughs> Uh, Ivaldi says, I watched Matt on Learn with Jason yesterday about framer motion. Cool. Yeah. I think we, um, we rated him the other day. Our router, ha our router has just, uh, built in ingrock and no IP integration. Interesting. And what's up, Mid Jim? I'm not showing YouTube comments today, though when I stream this weekend, we will show YouTube comments. Yeah. Put versus patch. Sure. So, um, well... Can I though? <laughs> so uh, typically, uh, you, if you, you might be comparing patch and post, and, and we're talking about RESTful APIs. And with RESTful APIs, um, if you're trying to adhere to the REST design, a post is typically for creating a new entity. So, um, or creating a new entity, or updating an existing entity and updating all of the properties of an existing entity. So, if we had uh, an entity called user and we wanted to update that user, if we implemented a post route, that would mean that we need to send every single property of the user. We need to send their avatar, their username, their um, every other property on the user object. We would have to send that for the update. And that's typically involved with a post. If you're doing a patch, typically that means you're updating an entity, but you're only sending the specific um, properties that you're going to be updating instead of all of the properties. So if I just wanted to update the avatar, I could do a patch against the user resource URL with just the avatar. Uh, now, how does that differ from put? I really don't know. <laughs> we can look up the REST protocol. Um, RESTful. Representational state transfer? There we go. Um, do they break it down? Uh Put to store the representation in the request body as a new state of the resource. Okay, so maybe I, I got the, I got those wrong. So, post is for creating an entity. Put is for updating an entity, but sending the entire resource. And patch is for updating only some parts of the resource. Though this really is just a convention. You can do whatever you want. You could make it all delete requests if you wanted to, because <laughs> it's. I mean, you're, if you're writing the back end, but don't do that. Um, so yeah, that's the difference. And I guess I had those confused. But you do see a lot of APIs using post for updating entities instead of put or patch. Didn't I update the Twitch donators on the list? No, I didn't add any um, donations on that list of supporters. I need to do that. We'll do that this weekend. Mom, can we have Ingrock at home? Mom, we already have Ingrock at home. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, I have Node version 10. Um... Maybe I maybe they just released it because I, I didn't I don't think I used to have that but I do have Code Wars Red yeah. Hello Uber. Hello El Muchacho. What's up? I'm doing good. Uh, can I mention cool stuff like Quaka? Uh, check out my VS Code extensions and settings. Do exclamation mark VS Code, and um, that might help you. Thank you Amino. <laughs> Put updates the whole entity. Patch updates part of the entity. There we go. Eternal Dev Coder has it. Patch is like update, put is like adding. I would say put is not adding a new record. Put is updating an existing record, but all of the properties on that record. Crud is post, get, put, delete. Put or patch. <laughs> you could do patch with crud. Simplest way to implement auth in JS. Use a service like Firebase auth or um, auth zero. And there's some other ones, but that's the simplest. If you want to actually write the code, you just got to write the code. Quality Coder says post equals create, put equals replace, patch equals update. I like it. I could have explained that in a whole lot quicker. <laughs> post is like create, put is like create or update, patch is like update. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome, Chris, but thank you to all the other people in chat because they have a much better grasp on all of that. Completely unhelpful comment. Fastest way to check if a number is divisible by two to the end. <laughs> is it completely unhelpful? We need, we need to get our optimizations going, though. So um, let's catch up on chat. The drink is a yerba mate. Um, not sponsored, but is, I love this drink. <laughs> Gayaki yerba mate, classic gold. I drink it so much. It's my favorite drink. It's pretty low sugar, a lot of caffeine. Whoa. Whoa. This used to have only 16 grams of sugar. It has 24 grams of sugar now. 
They changed the recipe. <laughs> I've been lied to. Uh, coding Garden chat points win. Uh, whenever we, um, whenever we get channel points, it's the at home meme. Oh, okay. <laughs> Passport JS. Yeah, there's Passport. There's also Grant. There's a few. Uh, Merchon says, why would you want to send the whole entity if you're only updating parts of it? Isn't patch better? I mean, patch is going to use definitely less, less data is going to need to go across the wire and you don't need to know what the previous properties are. Um, but sometimes that's just what you want to do. It's really up to your, your API implementation. Uh, I do. If you check out my YouTube channel, there are some playlists on adding auth to an API, all that stuff. Can I be a moderator? <laughs> You'll have to hang out in the, the channel a little bit longer. Oh, oh nice, David. It's good to hear. 16, it, like, compared to soda, right? If <laughs> Yes, 16 grams of sugar is much lower than, like, 60 grams of sugar, which is what a lot of... Uh, like, or even more um, energy drinks have in them. But this has 120 milligrams of caffeine and 24 grams of sugar. I don't know, I, I actually eat a lot of sugar. Writing off code isn't very good practice. It can introduce many bugs. It's just so many things to consider. Um, yeah, and so that's why people typically um, choose a service because they don't have to worry about all of that and the service takes on all the liability of like uh, security concerns and such, so yeah. No, no new mods. <laughs> and usually you, uh, I don't, and there might have been, there might have been, yes, 16 grams is less than 60 grams. Um, there might have been one mod that asked to be a mod, but I usually only mod people that are, that, yeah, no, not usually people that ask to be a mod. It's definitely not. I should stop talking about it. <laughs> have I ever mentioned the wrestling? Um, I haven't. All right. Just clipped you by... So okay, cool. <laughs> Though Infy had been hanging out on the channel for a very long time. Just click Infy's name. Well, actually, most most of the mo the newer mo mods um, got modded on Twitch and not YouTube. It's like two Diet Cokes worth of caffeine and a tablespoon of sugar. <laughs> the thing is, I do not like artificial sugar. I don't like aspartame or um, uh, stevia. I, I just do not like the flavor. Look at that. Infi followed 200 days ago. <laughs> I agree, Doc. We'll get that going. Put it on the ideas list. And thanks for the follow. Okay. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to plug this code into Code Wars, and we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if, it's, if, it, if it runs out of time. And if it does run out of time, we need to optimize it. So we can test it on just the basic inputs. It's going to be fine. But when we do a full attempt, it actually runs it against a bunch of different random tests behind the scenes. And that's where it could time out. So right now, for that test run, it took 1.2 seconds. Let's try to just do it. I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, Lil Lil Lil. And look, it's going to time out. We'll get it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, it timed out. Um, can you get it in the UK? That is how you spell it. Um, I don't think there's an accent over the E. <laughs> okay, so we timed out. Now let's look at Doc's recommendations for speeding things up. For one, um, we can do this. Value... <laughs> <laughs> bit shift one divides by two. Um, so we could say value equals value one. Um, we're gonna re we're gonna rewrite the get strongest function. So we'll we'll leave that one. Potentially slow. My theme hurts your eyes more than a light theme. Well, um, that is a very unpopular opinion, but. I appreciate your opinion. Um, <laughs> thanks, bro. Is there a... Um, it's called right shift. Okay. <laughs> Yatko says it's called right shift. I don't know what it is. Uh, Doc recommended it. So value equals value doo doo one. Like that. Um, now, let's see, did that work? Oh, it still works. Would you look at that? <laughs> so um, we'll comment this one out. 
So my image proxy stops loading images at a certain size. Um, but um, I think that's okay because some people might try to like, I think somebody did this once. They sent an image that was like hundreds of megabytes and like my inter internet went to a crawl. So yeah, that's a thing. It's It might be the high contrast, yeah, but I, I actually like it. I like that it's uh, so different but between all the different syntax and stuff. Okay, so we did that one speed up. Let's see if that changes anything. This is All I'm gonna do is that one speed up and um, submit that instead and see if it does not time out. Okay, so a simple test, good. Let's try longer tests, bigger tests. And thanks for the follow, Imhmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmm
And thanks for the follow, infected node. Okay, let's let's see what we can do with this comment. Um, oh, and also uh, search odd multiples of powers of two from large to small that fit in the range. So multiples of two thirty one, then two thirty, then two times tw oh, 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 oh. Uh, two raised to the thirty one, and two raised to the thirtieth. Okay, how do I found? Um, how, not not found. <laughs> how do I find uh, the power of two for a given m? I guess I take the square root. Math.floor of the square root? Yeah, and Skaze is saying, uh, I was thinking in Angular 2, and for some reason I discarded view. Um, but yeah, th that's the other, like, Angular also has all of those things built in as well. And Angular definitely comes from the um, enterprise mindset. And if you're familiar with, like, Java and enterprise code, Angu like, the latest Angular is going to look very familiar to you. There's a lot of boilerplate. <laughs> There's a lot of, and, but Angular has a lot of opinions about where files go. Vue doesn't have opinions about where files go. Uh, it just, um, what's the word? Um, it, it provides the libraries, but you can kind of put anything, things anywhere you want. Stretch. Am I doing memoization? I guess, do I need to? I guess I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to do value mod two. I guess I could memoize, memoize this, right? Memoize. <laughs> um, mods by two. Um, so if mods by two is there, then we'll say mods by two at, uh, mods by two at value. Memoization, so memoization is like caching. So what I'm about to do is instead of uh, calculating to see if a value is divisible by two every single time, we are going to store the result of uh, calculating the value divisible by two so that on, on the next time we call it, we don't have to calculate it, we can just look it up. So, um, memoirs the, the entire 32-bit integer range. So what I'm gonna say is if mods by two at value, um, Or then I need to do mods by two at value equals value mod two is equal to zero return values mod by two. Something like this. So basically what I do is um, if if our, our our cache, this is our cache. So we're, we're, we're storing the value mod by two inside of here. And let's, let's actually just log uh, values mod by two right here. Um, so we're, we're logging every, every possible value that's modded by two. Um, so that <laughs> the cache is slower than the calculation. Well, <laughs> um, and actually, Yeah, and then we're just building it up. So on every iteration, we don't have to check. Let's see. Let's just see if this is any faster. <laughs> we'll keep that there. Uh, we don't want to log that. Let's see. Um, and it still technically works, but let's see. Tables are cool. All right, so it still works there. We're going to try a larger attempt. Well, let's see. Uh, Merchan says, consider this. The strongness of 2n is the strongness of n plus 1. If you cache the strongness of n, you don't need to calculate it again. We ran out of memory. <laughs> so our little cache object here actually got bigger than 2 gigabytes. Uh, I think we're limited to 2 gigabytes of memory. Let's see. Um... Actually, I don't see what I don't see what the memory size is, but we filled up this cache so fast, and that and that broke it. <laughs> so, okay, Merchan says the strongness of two n is the strongness of n plus one. So if I cal if I cache the strongness of n, I don't need to calculate it again. Uh, 
Oh. I think I think I can get that working in like two seconds. Let's try it. Computers can b divide by two incredibly fast. <laughs> uh, that's that's called uh, Quaka JS. Can someone throw the link to Quaka JS? And actually, I might have a command for it. Do exclamation mark Q U A K K A. Oh Q U O K K A. Quaka. In and one instead of in mod two. Not sure if it's faster. Oh okay, we can try that too. All right, so let's get rid of that idea of caching all, all values that are, are divisible by two. We're going to go backwards. We're going to get rid of that. Um, and we can just say uh, in and one. Does this still work? This does not work. I'm not sure what to do with that with that operator. <laughs> so we're going to go back to inmod2. <laughs> and that, that continues to work. OK, so uh, I think, did I copy Merchon's message? Let's see. 18 gigabytes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's called Quaka.js. Someone throw the link to Quaka, please. And thanks for the follow, uh, Legal Emo. Uh, eat calculators. It's good for your mental health. Might need parentheses around it. Oh, okay. Oh, not in. Yeah, that did it. Thank you, Yako. Why are there so many JavaScript frameworks? Ah, people have a lot of opinions. Okay, if I extend his logic, like, I don't know if I can do. I I kind I have to go. I kind of I have like less than five minutes to try and do this. So this this suggestion comes from Mert Chan, who says the strongness of two n is the strongness of n plus one. So um, yeah. So really, I just need the strongness. St strongness. <laughs> Here, and I should be able to say, like, um, strongness equals strongness at, well, I guess we don't, we really only calculate it once, but I do want to do this. I want to say, um, strongness at, um, value equals strongness. So here we're, we're keeping track of, um, all possible strongnesses. And actually, we could make this a global cache. So on on on. So I don't think we'll run out of memory here because we're technically just storing. Um, wait, we're ha, we could run out of memory, <laughs> but I'm thinking we're actually just storing. Um, it's not every value in a range. It's just the values itself. Um, why is it empty? Oh, strongnesses. I, I over overwrote it. <laughs> this is a horrible variable name. We're going to call it a strongnesses. Here we go. And so this is all values in a range. OK, OK. And thanks for the follow fever. If I start with the small values, I don't really get any acceleration because you miss the cache every time. Why aren't I using arrow functions? Because these are, I prefer, like, if a function is not a callback, I kind of just like to use the function keyword, but an arrow function would work just as well. Just search for odd multiples of two raised to the 31st in the range, then. I don't know what this means, Doc. <laughs> and I don't think we're going to be able to, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. Because I have to go. I'm not a fan of coding problems that are secretly math problems. Math. <laughs> well, this is more of about an optimization problem because we we solved it fairly simply, but now it's about like how yeah, and it is a math problem to be able to optimize it. Yeah, all coding is math in disguise. <laughs> yeah, we renamed it to strongnesses. Boo. <laughs> What's up, Larry? How's it going? When naming variables goes wrong, Doc is officially too smart. Okay. Um, I'm actually, here's what I'm going to do. Before I try to optimize this, I'm just going to see if, if holding on to the strongnesses um, 
is going to make us run out of memory. And I don't think it will because it's just the numbers within a range. It's not all of the mods by two. So let's just make sure we don't run out of memory. Let's just make sure that we time out. And if we only time out, then we can start to implement that logic. Yeah, we ran out of memory. <laughs> okay, we can't we can't really use a cache like that. Um, so the cache goes away, but we can hold on to the strongness of n minus one. Why don't I use an array instead and only store the values that equal zero? Pretty much the same thing as you're doing except an array. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but I have. Two minutes. The strongness of two times n is the strongness of n plus one. Okay, so I actually only have to calculate half of them, right? So we're going to we're going to create this cache but the cache is just going to be local to the function. So it'll get thrown away every time the function's called instead of creating like a giant thing in memory that's like gigabytes. So this this should be okay. Um, and then the calculated at value equals strongness like that if we calculate it. Um, but really what we have to say is if we've calculated uh, 2 times n uh, no, so if we've so the, the strongness of two times n is the strongness of n plus one. So if we've calculated the strongness of n divided by two. So if um, calculated at n divided by two, and we kind of want to like, yeah. So if we've already calculated it, then technically the strongness is equal to calculated at n plus one. I think this is what Merchan is saying. And so we have like let strongness here. And then else we need to actually calculate it and store the cached value. And we'll also store the cached value of uh, the calculated value. And it's not in its value. And this never gets called, <laughs> you can see. Um, but I guess that's because we're not using really big numbers. So you can see here, Quaka tells me if lines never actually run because it's gray. Um, all right, let's try with a really big number. And I actually don't know what it's going to be. Wait, wait, oh, the, a range. Yeah, so let's go from zero to like a million. Or like a, a billion. And now we see that that code gets called. <laughs> uh, Larry says, uh, isn't this just the number of chilling zeros in the binary? It might have been, Larry. Where were you an hour ago? <laughs> but let's let's see if this works. So um, wait. Oh, no. Did I get an infinite loop? I think I crashed Quaka. Let's remove some zeros. I think we crashed clock. <laughs> uh, an array or even a bit vector is still going to be gigabytes of memory. The problem is I'm trying to memoize all positive integers, which is going to give you a bad time. OK. Um, and in that case, isn't it just the smallest even number greater than or equal to the same power of 2? Probably. I'm not good at math. All right, we're going we're gonna to take, take this optimization, which probably will time out, but we'll see. Um, and see what happens. If it doesn't work, we're going to revisit this tonight. Apparently, this 6Q problem was a lot harder than we thought it would be. Memoization. So memoization is when you, um, you hold on to previous calculations of the same value. Uh, OK, so we timed out. <laughs> Just download more, more RAM, right? More rem memory. But uh, memoization um, has to do with caching. If you haven't heard of caching, caching is when uh, you store the previous result of something. So if you need that result again, you just use the stored version. 
So with memoization, um, you make it so that if a function is called with the same value twice, you don't have to compute the result twice. You just compute it once and then return from the cache. Cross off power twos. All right. <laughs> so apparently this problem was very hard. We spent roughly an hour on it. We, we did a lot of talking too, but we're going to revisit this tonight. So I am going to stream more code katas tonight at around 6.30 PM mountain time, uh, which is GMT minus six minus five. Let's look. I'm in Denver, Colorado, Denver. And let's get uh, GMT. So I'm going to be streaming at about 1 a.m. GMT. <laughs> Roughly. But closer to 2 a.m. tonight. <laughs> Tune in. And hello, Rod. Uh, thanks, uh, Doc and um, Merit Chan, for the suggestions. Thank you, Larry, for the suggestion. We can try Larry's suggestion tonight. Uh, absolutely. Um, let's see. There we go. Uh, and thank you, Larry, for those suggestions. So I think you can just count from powers of twos. If not found, then the smallest even number between n and m. Whoa, that's even better. <laughs> so we'll hold on to that, too. So all of these suggestions were from Larry. Thank you, Larry. Heart. Um, and then this suggestion actually came from all, all the suggestions above came from Doc. <laughs> and then this one came from Merchan. Is that how you spell Merchan? Oh, I'm missing an E, I think. That. <laughs> Uh, Doc says, that was my earlier unhelpful comment. Unfortunately, in JavaScript, you can't count the number of trailing zeros without two string, which will be slow. Yeah. Um, so that's what Doc was saying up here. And of course, all these comments, which tr we're trying to help. <laughs> but I, I'm not very good with all the math stuff. So but yeah, we're going to revisit this tonight. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all the new follows. Um, and what is wrong with math? That makes coding even better. <laughs> No, math, math is fine. Um, it's just you may not need to use this kind of math in your everyday programming job. And if you do, you probably are better at math than I am. So, yeah. And thanks for the follow console log dog. <laughs> All right. We'll find somebody to raid. So let's get that raid message ready. Um, I have to go. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. This was fun. I'll see you this evening. Um, but please copy and paste that raid message. Uh, hello, Eric Coder. Have a nice day as well. Seedling. Part. that so copy and paste that uh stick around join us in the raid i'll figure out somebody to raid have a wonderful day and i'll potentially see you this evening and see you have a great day too larry and thanks for the tips hopefully we can get them working this evening all right win32 is going to learn typescript that sounds like fun Alrighty, uh wherever you are in the world have a wonderful morning afternoon evening or night and until next time here is this Thank you.